Hello, and thanks for your interest and your time in checking out my project, Beautiful Struggle. In this particular series, we're going to talk about the light and color uses in the project. Uh, it's a two-part project. Part one, I capture these fine art landscape images of these plants that are growing in difficult or hostile environments. And then in part two, I pair those up with a human counterpart. They pick an image from my library of strugglers, and then I make an environmental portrait of the two of them together. And so what we need to talk about first in this project is color and first off it is a color project almost all of my work is and my use of color is always intentional in my work my use of color is meant to portray how I experienced a moment and sometimes somebody might say to me oh that flower couldn't have really been that yellow and my response back is I'm really sorry that that flower doesn't appear that way to you Th this is how I experience my world and my art is meant to express to you what it looks like to me not how it might look to you and so all of my color choices are usually vivid saturated colors because that's kind of how my brain works uh, and my light choices are always going to be deliberate to support the concept and aesthetic of the project and to communicate something deeper than just the aesthetics of the image so the only way to talk about it in this project is going to be to go by each image one by one because each one is different between the plant struggler and the human struggler. To begin with, here's Andrew. Uh, he's a young guy diagnosed with a fatal heart condition. And uh, his particular image he chose is some sagebrush growing out of some shifting sand. Uh, and I chose to make the light in that particular image, the harsh midday light, kind of really expressing the the harshness of the moment of, of what that plant has to endure. And uh, in Andrew's case with his environmental portrait, because he's a young guy, I really felt like morning light was going to be the appropriate choice for this particular image because he really ought to be starting out his life, but it's also kind of the end of his life. So sunrise, sunset kind of blurs. People don't have a reference for which one this is. And, and using the two of them together kind of makes a conceptual reference to his particular struggle. With Bruce... He picked this particular tree that's growing real deep in a slot canyon, right out of a volcanic rock face. And I chose to photograph this particular tree when I found it in the first light that touched it as the light just came into the slot canyon and illuminated the leaves of that tree. That's the moment I wanted to, to capture. It really expresses hope. It, it really expresses that waiting for the light to come. And, and here it is, and it's glorious, it's warm, it's inviting. And uh, Bruce just really fell in love with this image. He's a resident of a full-time health care center and almost never leaves the center. And so the only appropriate light choice for him was to photograph him in his environment with these kind of sickly fluorescent and, and sodium halide lights. And so it's kind of a mixed lighting palette, and we do the best we can to color balance for that. But the, the lighting used for his image was the lighting he lives in because that's part of his story. Uh, his service, his visiting others and everything all occurs in this light. With this particular image of Christy, Christy is uh, a young lady who wanted to be a model when I first met her and, and we helped build her a portfolio and everything. And so the only place appropriate to photograph Christy was going to be in the studio since modeling is what she really wants to do. So we used studio light in a flattering way, typical of any kind of fashion shoot we would do with her, a portfolio headshot. And the image she chose uh, happens to be some rabbit brush growing out of some shifting sand. And I was driving by this location, and there was this beautiful storm overhead. But some light was breaking through these dramatic storm clouds and, and hitting this. We see kind of the, the long shadows, and there's a lot of energy and a lot of drama in this image. And it really makes a nice metaphor for what this plant's experiencing and so to pair Christy with this picture when she chose it really was such a great natural fit and the lighting really helps tell some of Christy's story of, of energy and drama. This is Cloner. Uh, he chose a single yellow flower that's growing out of kind of a volcanic bed of rock uh, in Death Valley. And it's really kind of a hopeful moment because nothing grows in Death Valley except once every you know, 15, tw 12 to 15 years, we get what we call a super bloom down there where flowers actually exist for a short time. And I chose to photograph this one too as the first light was illuminating this cliffside and, and the plant just lit up and we get kind of some of that translucence through the petals and 
and it makes it almost glow. And again, it's such a moment of hope in an environment of, of such hostile condition. Um, Connor himself, his, his life really does kind of mimic this moment. He's, he's been through some hard things, and we chose to photograph him in, in his environmental portrait, first in front of a building that's very important to his story, Second, because of the, the storm that was rolling in, we didn't have a whole lot of control over the lighting conditions, but we wanted him to be in the shade because that harsh overhead sun wasn't appropriate for his story at the time. He was kind of in, in a funk and in a gloom, and so the shade of the building worked out perfectly for his image to help further the narrative. In this particular image, um, the dill weed that's growing out of this playa, we call it, it it's not really mud, it, it's a really thick, hard thing. You can't peel it up with your finger, but you could dig it out with, with a pocket knife or something like that, and it comes out in big chunks. Uh, really difficult soil conditions f for anything, and it's really, really salty. And here's this dill weed growing. Again, dramatic early f first light to really add, you take the golden hour and you add it together with this green, and we, we just get this moment that feels beautiful. And part of that harkens back to the image saturation that we've all experienced. Landscape images are almost always shot in the golden hour, and that golden hour helps inform our brains. We kind of feel that moment. We feel the energy of that first light. And, and it's no different in this image. You, you can feel the moment. And we chose to photograph uh, Diane in her environment in an overcast day. Uh, for similar reasons. She's, she's got these struggles that are just always present and feel burdensome, like, like the weight of those heavy clouds, and those clouds help to saturate the colors and, and make things more vivid naturally, so it was a really good fit. With Gilda, uh, her particular image, also taken in some playa out in California, of, of this flower growing out of the, the cracked, parched earth, uh, also, early morning light, just to really make this a dramatic, beautiful moment. Uh, and Gilda herself wanders the streets in my hometown, and I always find her under a tree or in the shade of a building. She's never in the direct sun unless she's moving from place to place. And so in her environmental portrait, we wanted to continue that narrative, of course, and place her under one of the awnings she was likely to be. So we've used shade to inform her story of location. This particular image, uh, let's start first with Gina. She's a young actress, she's, she's a dynamo. She's full of energy, she's full of passion, she's full of drama. Uh, and so we chose to photograph her in front of a local theater, uh, but we also want to use this energetic, dramatic light. So the light's kind of low in the horizon, we can see these long shadows, and it really adds energy and drama to the moment. The image she took was taken, uh, the image she chose to have her portrait taken with was taken in early morning light. Uh, it was an aerial shot from a drone, and the light hadn't quite lit up this cliffside, but the, the rest of the sky was beginning to, to be light, and so we have kind of soft reflected light onto the cliff face uh, from the clouds as the sun was reaching up and bouncing off those clouds. Um, much like a reflector, and so we have this reflected soft light, and it just really caught my attention. There's a place I've been many, many times, but I never noticed this particular tree until the lighting conditions lit it up like this, and so it pulled my attention to the image. With John, his image is taken also on an overcast day. Uh, this is a pinion pine that's growing out of the Navajo so sandstone overlooking Zion's National Park. Um, and the lighting choice on this image, partly I was at mercy. I, I had made my trip for this time, and I would planned to be there early morning light, and the sky was overcast, but I'd made the hike. I wasn't going to not take the image. It just really felt soft and, and present, if, if that makes any sense. There wasn't harsh shadow. There wasn't harsh light. There wasn't long, raking, golden light. It was just, it was just there. It was abiding. Uh, and it was a beautiful moment, and, and this tree looks completely different in, in different light. So we captured this image. John identified with this one, 
And for his environmental portrait, we chose an environment that he's always in. And he's under some mixed lighting conditions, fluorescent light overhead, as well as a great big picture window to his right that's letting in some of this natural daylight. And so this mixed light is the environment I've come to know John in. This is him perched in front of some of his work that hangs uh, in my gallery. And he comes and he teaches classes here and he hangs out here. And, and this is the place that John really belongs. So the lighting choice here is meant to be representative, again, of his story. Kate is a young lady uh, with really kind of a tragic, unfair story. Uh, she picked uh, another beautiful yellow flower growing out of the playa in Death Valley. And that flower was taken first light of morning just as it hit the, the yellow petals and made them kind of luminescent. Um, and so there's really kind of this glow from the flower. And the placement of the flower on her body was important to represent kind of that glow that comes out of Kate despite her struggles. And so she's a young lady whose childhood literally has been taken from her. She hasn't got to be a normal teenager and do teenage stuff. She's been bedridden most of this, her time, in and out of hospitals, failed surgeries, misdiagnoses. I mean, she's really had quite a struggle, and yet she's still a happy gal, and she's still lighthearted. And so we chose to kind of photograph her. This is evening light uh, in a canyon. The the sun has kind of gone down behind the mountain, so we have just this soft light. It's not really quite shade because the hard light is gone. So we're, we're kind of in the dusk hours. And I use that as a metaphor for, for what she's going through in her life. She, she has this hope, you know, this bright flower, but things don't look good for her. And she's sick most of the time and home most of the time and doesn't get to go do things that normal teenagers do. And so this light was used kind of to, to create weight in the image, the, the heaviness of the moment, uh, by exposing it a little bit dark like this, like it really occurred, instead of exposing it to be bright, again, we're trying to create the weight of, of the burden she's carrying. Megan, oh, what a beautiful story here, also picked a yellow Death Valley flower. Uh, and I'll never forget what she said about this flower when we organized her shoot. She said, you know, this isn't a struggler. This flower is badass. And I really reflected on how she perceived this image and this moment versus how I did as a photographer. And I thought, you know, what a beautiful flower growing in this, this hard, hard place. And she thought, man, look at, look at what this flower's overcoming. It, it's a tough son of a gun. And it, it was just really fun to see this picture through her eyes. And you can see the light hasn't quite touched this flower. It's touched the far mountains there. This is kind of dawn light, pre-sunrise. And, and it, it shows change, that the light is changing. And it was really fantastic that she picked this image, and we photographed her environmental portrait in the same kind of thing, changing light. It's, it's a storm, uh, and her life really was kind of a storm at the time. Uh, you can see some cues to some of the changes she's going through, and you can read her story. But, but the change is what we really wanted to emphasize with the light in her environmental portrait. And she happened to choose a flower that demonstrates this changing light. It was wonderful. Mike, uh, I guess the first thing I love about this image is this little triangle shadow that, that we get off of him holding. And, and this was a deliberate choice. We, we picked light that was kind of evening light. We wanted a time of day specifically when the important visual elements of his environmental portrait were lit up. And so we've got good natural light here that's not quite glorifying golden light, but certainly not harsh light of midday. We've got these important shadows and, and other elements. And then we look at his particular image, uh, which was shot again on an overcast day as a matter of circumstance, but we used we use that in, in the aesthetics of the edit to create an image that feels like a bright spot in a dark place. With Olivia, uh, her environmental portrait was only appropriate in the place that we're referencing in her story and the place she spends most of her time. This, this is her classroom and we have this mixed light coming through the window and these fluorescent lights overhead. Uh, and Contrastly, I, I think that we'd get a whole lot more out of education just by changing the lighting in classrooms, uh, warm natural light and daylight balanced lights instead of these sickly fluorescent lights, but that's 
a different topic altogether in her particular image. Uh, this was an evening shot uh, as the cliff face had come into shadow, but we had such nice blue saturated sky and, and the colors were all nice and vivid because they weren't washed out by harsh light. They weren't altered to the yellow spectrum from golden light. And so her little struggle pops out off of this cliff with this bright green against this, you know, pinkish red. Rachel, this was a, a really tough story. Uh, she picked this uh, image from the Struggler Library and she immediately said frozen but still alive. She says that's just like me and this image was taken pre-dawn. It was actually pretty dark out, long exposure, but I shot this snow with this little cedar tree growing up through it um, and we get the the real sense of coldness of the image through the color cast from that light. If, if we'd have waited till natural light the snow would have been white instead of this blue uh, so we deliberately used color and light in this image to create a sense of feeling. Uh, and then with Rachel, uh, she came for her portrait on a stormy day, which really felt kind of appropriate after interviewing her for her story. And the rain let up just long enough for us to get this picture. And although visually I would have preferred, you know, a blue sky to play against the blue snow, conceptually, this is what it needed to be, this gray sky against this tree and her reference to the tree from her childhood. And the light choice turned out to be the appropriate choice to further the narrative, regardless of what my instincts would have been for creating blue against yellow, etc. Meet Sarah, again another educator, so the appropriate place to take her picture was her classroom, so our light is constrained by the fluorescence overhead that you can see reflected in the whiteboard and the natural light coming through the window which you also see reflected on the whiteboard and kind of you see kind of a split color cast in in her face from this as well because this is the environment and so we're using a lighting choice to represent the environment her particular flower uh, no I didn't place the the flower in a little fire pit there and I didn't build a little ring to protect it but you know, she referenced the image saying that it just felt like her support network surrounding her and protecting her. Uh, and this little flower was found in Death Valley like this. Somebody had protected this little flower. And the light was uh, dawn light, so nothing direct. And it really helped that purple be vivid and, and just come across as saturated and vivid. So again, all these light circumstances are playing to the stories that they're telling. Meet Susan, uh, her environmental portrait needed to be this home that is such a big part of her life and so important to her narrative. Uh, she also picked a pre-dawn image where we really get a deep, deep blue uh, and the sun just breaks the ridge and hits just the tops of this little plant uh, when I took this picture. <laughs> Sorry about that. But you can feel the temperature of the picture and it really drives the narrative of, of what this plant is enduring. And Susan loved the bling as the snow glints a little bit there in the foreground. Uh, and her portrait is taken kind of underneath her avocado tree at her home in natural sunny Southern California light because that was the environment and, and a reference to her story. In conclusion, I think that all projects that we undertake the color choices and light choices must be deliberate choices and they have to be in support of a narrative, not just an aesthetic, but the aesthetic concern is also one of those concerns. And in my project, we're pairing an image within an image and often the contrast of light between what the landscape image was and what the environmental portrait is offers the viewer other opportunities to compare and contrast and, and draw other conclusions. And so all of these things, some of them are happy little miracles that work out when we shoot. Some of them are deliberate choices. But in editing, we have the power to make those choices permanent by what we choose to include or exclude. And that's the case in this project. So thank you for sharing your time with me.